Hello friends, Coach Bob with you, and today we are gonna get rid of that monstrosity, that horrible monstrosity they call the fender on the modern day motorcycle. It is ugly as it can possibly be. We want it to look like that. We want that clean look. We don't want that ugly hanging out there thing, man. We don't want that. Found a company in California called Vagabond. We'll talk about them just in a few minutes, but we're gonna get this install started, but let's move a few things around and install a tail tidy or AKA fender eliminator. But this is the first official two-wheel Tuesday. It is not replacing Can-Am stuff. It is simply adding to. So be sure and share this with your two-wheel friends and come along for the ride as we make this little fella much nicer. So this is what comes on virtually every motorcycle nowadays is this horrible looking piece that sticks out about 20 feet. I found a company online. I'm gonna go grab uh, the, uh, the package. I haven't even opened it yet. It's by a company called Vagabond Motorsports, I believe. Let me grab it. So this tail tidy is uh, by a company called Vagabond Motorsports, uh, and you can call it a tail tidy. That's what they call it in Europe. Here in America, we call it a fender removal kit, whatever you want to call it. But the idea is the same to get rid of this horrible looking monstrosity back here. Now, this company I found online, the uh, piece, I'll uh, put a price and everything right here. And uh, it was the best deal I found online and they make a couple of things for a lot of different bikes. They don't make a, a broad spectrum of items. They make a lot of fender removal stuff, uh, exhaust hangers, more machined type metal stuff. So we're gonna see the, what the quality looks like on this thing. I have no idea. I'd never heard of the company, so I just uh, threw caution to the wind, as I often do, um, and said, hey, let me chase the bargain, see what's going on here. So we're gonna get rid of this, we're gonna use the blinkers, and we're gonna use the light for the uh, for the license plate, but we're gonna get rid of all this plastic mess. So let's see what Vagabond Motors has sent us and what it is going to um, look like. And also, additionally, what sort of instructions. Huh, I went through the bag, <laughs> glad I didn't hit the metal. Tell you what, though, that's a sharp knife that cut the edge off the instructions too, look at that. <laughs> instructions look pretty, pretty nice, got some color pictures on there. Let's flip this upside down. Piece looks nice, nice and lightweight, but heavy duty. Blinkers go there, that bolts to the seat. Tail light goes through there. That's pretty much it, pretty simple. Uh, they give you all the hardware and some directions. So I am going to take the liberty of grabbing some tools and we're gonna get this thing taken apart and let's make this thing not look so horrible. So I have perused the directions. They don't look too hard. We're just gonna kind of wing ding this thing, take it a step at a time and talk our way through it. If you've got an SV650 or SV650X, uh, this should uh, work well for you. Also, if you would like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, I would appreciate it. So let's get going. All right, we should have three different little harnesses back here. I have a quick release uh, uh, zip tie plastic piece you just lift up. So that is undone. Let's pull that to the side, don't wanna lose it. All right, so you lift this little piece right here, little tab, pull it out. There are three of them. There is a black one, a gray one, and a white one. This uh, large piece here, we don't have to disconnect that. So now the wiring stuff is all done. That's all there was to that. Next up, there are four 10 millimeter bolts right here. Three, four. Once you get them started, turn them right out with your hand, not a problem. And then last but not least, number four. And they were all easy to get out. And all I'm gonna do now is feed these wires out. That's it. Well, that looks better already. What a difference already, huh? You don't realize how horrible that thing is. But kudos to Suzuki on this because it, this was very easy to take off. So now I just have to disassemble the lights and everything off of this and put it on the new piece and then reverse the process and that should be it. I mean, this is way, way too easy so far. I don't wanna jinx myself because, you know, sometimes they start out real easy and they go south real fast. But what we're gonna do, because the wind is so bad out here and I don't want it to uh, destroy our audio, we're gonna walk inside, we can do this at the kitchen table. So we have all of our pieces in here. Now what we're looking at 
is we have to get all of these wires out of this, this rubber piece here. We're gonna use that again. And we have to take this little tail light section off there, which is mounted in plastic. It's just a couple of Phillips heads. It looks like a couple of eight millimeters. And we're just gonna get that taken apart, get the rubber boots out of there, and then we'll be ready to start transferring these electrical parts over to this. Blinker one should be, like I said, should be an eight millimeter. Very easy. Other one, just loosen it. Let's go ahead and undo the two Phillips head screws that are in the uh, tail section here. These two screws we won't use again. I believe we reuse the washers, but we do not use the screws. These, these two screws, I believe, are too long because uh, this is a thinner material. Um, either way, you don't use these again, these self-tapping plastic screws. So we're gonna set those to the side. We'll have a couple of new ones for that. Keep my washers there because I have a feeling we will need those again. It's just a Phillips head screw right there. There was one on those two sides and that's it. Take the washer off, throw that screw over there to the side. So there's a rubber boot right here. And what we want to do is we want to get this rubber boot. We're going to pull it out of here. And that way it'll be easier to feed our, uh, feed our wires through it. Put this in my lap, get a little more leverage. Just kind of, I'm feeding them through to where they're staggered so that they're not sitting side by side so that I can get them through the plastic piece. There they are, all three are down, out now. So now we have this plastic piece here. Let's see, number one fit through, number two fit through, and number three fit through. Now these blinkers are side specific. Let's go ahead and pull this tail light off of here. Okay, we got another rubber boot right here. We'll be reusing all of this rubber material here. So we're gonna pull that off as well. And that rubber boot goes all the way through the back of the tail light. And other than pulling the blinkers off, we're done with that piece. We'll go ahead and pop this tail light through, or this, uh, this license plate light. We'll go ahead and pop this in here. Here's our new bag of screws. We'll be going through all that here in just a moment. Here are the new plastic screws right there. Or the screws that go into the plastic. Remember any time you're screwing into plastic, don't kill it. Because if you do, you're gonna strip the plastic out and then you're gonna have a real problem. Then all of a sudden, fender eliminator type thing is a much larger problem than. So again, we're gonna use this rubber piece here and the existing light. But one thing that we're not going to use is that big plastic spacer. You pull that off, I have to take this boot off to get it there. So now we take this, run it back through the hole and you feed your rubber piece back in here like this. And as things start to bind, you can reach in through the back pull these pieces here, just pull them through. Everything looks good, everything looks nice and flush. Now we just take the light, we're using this existing piece. Notice there is a, uh, a channel right there. That little channel is for water, so you wanna make sure that channel is on the bottom. Press it in, you might have to work that around because this light has never been in here. It's always, always that little piece. Now you're gonna use these shorter screws because that block no longer exists. Stick that right in there, stick the other one right in here using the existing washers. Remember, you are going into plastic. You do not want to kill it, because if you do, you will break your light, and then you're buying an LED light that costs more money. So basically, all you're looking to do is compress that rubber grommet, and that's more firm than that light has ever been. Wow, what a difference, huh? Taking that off also made a difference. Every little thing that you can get off the back of that thing makes a difference. So the blinkers, there is a left and a right, but if you'll remember, the writing on these things is on the bottom. So you can't get it backwards. As long as the writing is on the bottom, you're gonna be doing the right thing. Make sure the light's facing backwards. <laughs> so let's pull these out, just like that. Pull the other one out, just like that. We're done with that. Now let's uh, look at the blinkers again. Light facing the back, writing on the bottom. So there's the writing I was telling you about. That would be on the top if it were on that side. So it's gonna go that way. So feed that through the big hole. Small bolt will go through there. They're just little eight millimeter nuts. They go right on there. What I'm going to do though, as with everything that I do, I'm gonna put a little Loctite on these threads. So let's put this one on. And we'll do the same thing with this one here. Pull it through, 
You want to screw through the hole. Looks like that. Put the eight millimeter nut on here. Instead of got a little Loctite on it already. It was recommended that you don't snug these up until you get them on the motorcycle because they will pivot. You could say like that. And so we want to make sure that the light is straight. But there it is. Man, does that look different or what? This piece here. This piece here is going to be reused as well. If you'll remember the way we did it last time, or the way we did it, we fed these through first. They did not recommend that I do this. I'm just going to try to do it this way and see what happens. It'll either work to my benefit or it won't. So we're going to feed these wires through here. And that is snug, isn't it? So we've got them all through here. Now the question, is this going to be so close that we can't do it this way? We will try it because I'm all in, baby. I'm all in. When putting this boot back on here, you can see there's one side that has a curve to it. And that's what you want curving towards the lights. If you're like me, you're finicky about how things look. So you're going to work with getting these things as lined up as well as you possibly can. So after a little work and finagling, that's what you end up with. They just go through that rubber boot. The rubber boot pulls right through the metal bracket there. That's all there is to it. Very, very simple, very ingenious. Now, of course, you do manhandle these wires a little bit. So my only concern right now, honestly, is did I pull anything loose? So what we'll do, we'll go outside right now, we'll put it on the motorcycle, turn the key and make sure everything's working. If everything's working, time to install this on the motorcycle and button everything up. So all we're gonna do, feed these wires back through. Just a hole, it's easy, easy to see. And of course, realize your wires now will appear much longer because you don't have all that stuff hanging out at the six o'clock position anymore. So that's what it's gonna look like. Let's, let's plug this stuff in now. We wanna make sure it's a working. Gray, black. Now, if you have an extra set of hands, that might be helpful, but it is totally not necessary. As a retired guy, my extra set of hands have all moved out. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the three wires, a gray, a black, and a white. And let's turn a key and see where we are. All right, we see that we have the uh, light for the license plate. We have a blinker and we have a blinker. Everything's working, perfect. All right, so let's talk about how this is gonna go together. We've got a long bolt, they're all four the same length. There's four of them. For the four holes, you're not using the ones you pulled out. You're gonna have a lock washer. Lock washer goes on the bolts. So let's go ahead and put the lock washer on all four of them. That's what we've got. Lock washer on a bolt, very simple. Then you have these spacers. These spacers are going to go on top of the fender eliminator. Now, you can see what just happened. It slid off and that's a problem, right? So that's gonna be a real nuisance. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I do things and then you can do it the way you wanna do it. But I've done this a lot with other motorcycles and this has always worked out pretty well for me. So what I do is I just take a little piece of painter's tape. I stick this through here like this with the spacer in place. And this painter's tape is just tacky enough to hold it in place. And right there I can just grab it. I leave a little bit, that's it. That's all there is to it. I could do all four of them. I think the back ones are going to be easy enough to get to. Just looking at them, I think it's going to be easy enough. One thing I will do, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and place a Loctite on these threads on all four of them. So if you're asking why I'm just taping one of them in, because one of them I'm going to be working with with my hand, and the other two I am going to be placing in place after, after the fact. Remember the ones that came out were a 10. Don't get to use your 10 millimeter anymore. Now you have to use a four millimeter hex, okay? So let's get this thing here in place on the front. See, as a geezer or a boomer or whatever you want to call me, I would have dropped this a half a dozen times already because that's what I do. I drop things all day long. Now, I'm sure that you're young and you don't do that, but I do. And so I have to use, I have to create little crutches for myself. And of course, put a little pressure on it, peel the tape back, stick it right there. Stick your four millimeter there in that and line it up. Again, let the, let the screw pull itself up in there. You don't, you really aren't, aren't putting any pressure on it. You let it pull itself up in there. Now you have a nice, I'm gonna show you this. So here's what we have. We have a nice little gap here. So the two screws are gonna go right through here and into two holes up there. There's one, two, 
three, four. That's all that holds it on. That's all there is to it. The wires simply go through that big giant crevasse there and you've got that rubber grommet as it pulls up close. That's all there is to it. Now with these back ones, there is a, it, it's kind of tight in there. So what I'm using, I'm, I'm putting it in the wrench itself and I'm just gonna feed that through to there and I'm gonna press it on up, lift it enough just to get it started. I'm not worrying about it being in there, in there. I just wanna get it started to hold it in place. My fingers are fat and clumsy, so what I've chosen is take a pair of needle nose pliers and I can hold that spacer in place right there where I couldn't get my finger in there. I'm gonna take this, feed it up through there. There it goes, I see it. Now, all four are loosely started. So I'll go in a night, I will tighten up, you know, three, four, five turns per screw, going in kind of a star formation. So that would be front right, back left, front left, back right, until the eliminator is pulled all the way up. Again, these things are not difficult. Take your time, you can do this. I guarantee you can do it. The guys who designed this, I will tell you, um, Vagabond Motorsports, I've never dealt with them before. Their shipping was Johnny on the spot and I am very pleased with this. It looks great, it was reasonably priced. It uses the manufacturer parts um, on this. Now what they do not send, they do not send you a license plate frame or any of that. I've got a temporary plate right now, so I don't have a frame yet anyway, so I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna put the temp plate back on here. All right. Man, that is solid as a rock. I mean, that looks great. What a difference. Double check it. Light, looks good. Blinker looks great. Blinker looks great. And anytime you're messing with wires, go ahead and check your brake light as well. Make sure everything's working. All right, looks great. Make sure the front blinkers are working. Make sure there are no shorts in there that you might have created. You want to make sure that this is not going to get in the way of your motorcycle seat latch, which is right there. But it didn't before, so I can't imagine it's going to now. What I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and zip tie this right here like that. And then I'm gonna run it across, I think, like that. So I'll get it started. Okay. Just go in here and neatly make sure nothing is binding or in the way of that seat latch. Everything looks wonderful. Everything looks nice and neat, looks stock. You'd never know that we did anything. Let's take the seat, put it back on. There we go. So here's the finished product, folks. It is absolutely beautiful. Yes, I did go back. I tightened the um, blinkers up, double checked to make sure this was a little snug. After it settled in, I did have to tighten those screws just a smidgen more. Um, everything else was perfect on it. What a dramatic difference. So the SB650X, it is a good looking little machine. You cannot go wrong with it. I am having a ball on this little motorcycle. So until next time, I want you to do me a favor. Go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Now you go seize the day. I'm gonna go put on some Alpine Star gear and a showy helmet and take this little rascal for a ride.